hello students hello children how are you hope everything is fine you all are fine and you are enjoying all the sessions that you are attending these days i rakhi mishra once again welcome you to this session and here we will be discussing enjoying a poem from your textbook beehive from unit 9 that is the snake trying from the title itself you must have guessed but i am not going to tell you right at the beginning what we are going to read let us have a quick look at these pictures what do you see here these are different types of snakes the title of the poem is the snake trying and i thought i must show you introduce you to some kind of snakes here in our country if you see several types of snakes several varieties of snakes found some are venomous some are non venomous some are poisonous some are not poisonous some are harmful some are not harmful my dear children if you remember in the previous story the same unit we read and we got a message from that story that the title the bond of love that title itself speaks that we have to have a good bonding we have to have a good bonding with the nature with all the elements of nature and these creatures these reptiles or other animals they are all part of it so goes with these reptiles also the snakes also right the moment you see these pictures on the screen i think you get scared oh mama some must be jumping on their chair right some must be running away from the from the room where you are sitting right now but my dear children you see they are not harmful they are harmless creatures and it is up to us it is we who think that they are harmful for us they are dangerous they always we are scared of them but the way we are scared of them they too are scared of us and they always attack whenever we feel that they are whenever they feel that we are going to attack them so unless we show our action of attacking them they never attack they will have their own rescue they will have their own way of leaving the place here you can see the names of the different types of snakes here indian egg eater snake then flower pot snake you can see even nature it is god's creation you see they have a beautiful way of having a camouflage you see the snake large scale pit uh, viper this as if when it's lying when it is it's found on the lawns you cannot make out the color matches with uh, the lawn so well that we feel we can't even see sometimes even when you find them on the trees or on the uh, wooden areas they can even have the uh, uh, they can change their color right the way we have the chameleons sim similarly they also can do and sometimes they get the camouflage and there are some tree snakes which are normally completely green in color and they you can't make out whether it's a leaf or a stem or it's a snake right but my dear children i want to tell you here that yes we we all human beings have a kind of feeling of we, we just get frightened the moment we talk about snakes there are some people who can't even see the picture of a snake they they are so scared of the snakes but my dear children they are harmless if we don't want to harm them if we don't attack them they will never harm us and with this message we are going to read a beautiful poem a very short poem but a beautiful poem today right okay so you can see the snake trying by w w e ross now let me tell you something about the poet poet we say w w e that means william ritson eustace ross he was born on june 14th 1894 born on june 14 1894 in peterborough in ontario which is a province in eastern canada and its capital is toronto he studied geophysics at university of toronto 
and earned his degree in 1914. He began writing poetry in 1923. His earliest works were in free verse. Now, what free verse means? We'll discuss, I'll tell you, the, this the poem that we are going to read today is the best example of free verse. And the beauty with this poet is that he has reflected through his poetry, he has reflected imagism and some kind of Japanese poetry. Now, what is imagism? You must have heard of imagery, right? When we talk about, it brings some kind of images. When we are through words, through uh, through the poem, the, the poet describes in the poem in such a way that we get a kind of imagery. Maybe the words, sometimes it talks about some visual imagery. The words are such that it will create an imagination in your uh, mind. It will create a sense of imagination that, yes, this looks like this. Sometimes we have sound imagery. The words will be used in such a way that it creates a kind of feeling as if something is, uh, some kind of sound is produced, right? Some kind of different type of movement is produced and he has done that very nicely. Here in this poem, we have also examples of imagery you will get to know. Published he, uh, in the, during his entire lifetime, he has published two collections. One is Laconics in 1930 and another is Sonnets in 1932. In 1930s, Ross developed interest in spirituality and that's why he had written only on these two collections. And in 30s, uh, you can say that he his interest shifted a bit and he stopped. Then we have, uh, in 1966, he died of cancer. So this is about the poet, about the poet, about W.W.E. Ross, right? Now we will move on to the other poems. It is not only uh, he who has written uh, this uh, the poem on snakes, but there are plenty of poems written on snakes. Snakes have always been uh, a very um, uh, interesting topic uh, for the poets to write on. And I have just written here three so that if you are interested, you can read it. Snake by D.H. Lawrence, The Snake by Emily Dickinson, and The Rattlesnake by John Charles McNeil. Right? If you want, you can read these poems too. What this poem is all about. We have to first see what we are going to read in this poem. Let me introduce you to the poem, then we'll go to the poem. This poem actually has thrown light on the theme that we have to work on prevention of cruelty towards animals. In my previous session, when I was talking about uh, the kind of uh, certain organized bodies, are there registered bodies, are there all over the world they are working for the protection of the animals. And we have this uh, poem with us with the same message that how we can prevent the people from being cruel to the animals. We should not unnecessarily torture them. Rather, we should accept them and let them also have a place in this world or on this earth. The way we survive, they too have the right to survive. The way we live happily, they too have the uh, right to live happily with their family. They too have kids. They too have family. It's not that they don't have or they don't have feelings. So we should remember that they, we should not be cruel to these animals. And here the poet is trying to appeal. This entire poem is actually a kind of appeal to the people. Through this poem he has appealed to the people not to harm or kill the snakes. Because you see they are such beautiful creatures. You just forget that you forget that you are frightened or you are scared of the snakes and you just observe them. You observe them because this is something that I am mentioning out of my own experience. I have I, I used to be scared of animals, but now the place where we are, it is oh, it's known for having uh, uh, the most dangerous, the most poisonous snakes. But you see, whenever I see them wandering in my courtyard or I see them wandering in my uh, garden, I never get scared these days. I feel as if I am having a shelter, they do have a shelter. And sometimes I stand and of course from a distance and I see them, I watch them, I observe them and enjoy every activity. Once I enjoyed, uh, 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 there were two peeping from uh, the holes and 
they were trying to play as if they were playing hide and seek and it was such an enjoyable experience so my dear children don't have any fear of these things of course you should be safe from you should not try to really be adventurous and attack them and all but you should try to uh, not to harm them right and if they harm it is only because of self defense the way we act the way we immediately do something for our self defense they too have god has gifted them also the ways for self defense snake is the in this poem that we are going to read it is here in the poem the snake is the victim of humans it is one uh, one person who has tried to harm the snake it is written in free verse if you remember i have uh, mentioned in the introduction about the poet that he writes in free verse that means there is no rhyming scheme you won't find any rhyming scheme there are no rhyming pairs and the lines are unequal in length so having these things in mind let us have a quick look at the poem and let us read the poem and enjoy it i hope all of you are ready with your textbook the snake trying the snake trying to escape the pursuing stick with sudden curvings of thin long body how beautiful and graceful are his shapes he glides through the water away from the stroke oh let him go over the water into the reeds to hide without hurt small and green he is harmless even to the children along the sand he lay until observed and chased away and now he vanishes in the ripples among the green slim reeds here you can see the source from where these pictures have been collected they have been collected from instagram.com and you can uh, snakes of india right you can also have a look at these they were they are real clippings of uh the, some of the people especially the rescuers right those who rescue these snakes they have they take the clippings of these snakes and you you can see the beauty how you, you can see in the picture also how beautiful this snake looks like and the kind of movement you see how it's hanging right we just can't imagine doing like this and these uh, these creatures have been gifted with such beautiful such a uh, quality that they can just climb the trees and they can uh, just have some kind of uh, curvature like this right so we should enjoy and appreciate these things of the nature rather than thinking about harming them killing them and finishing them we should never do it so now the poet here is the snake trying to escape the pursuing stick what does it mean the snake trying to escape snake as if it has been chased or it has been uh, uh, really followed by a stick pursuing stick right with sudden curvings of thin long body whose thin long body it's long thing it's talking about the snake's long body right it's trying to make sudden movements curvings of the thin long body how beautiful you can see the curves the way you can see in the picture also it is showing how they make curves they make turns and they twist their bodies so swiftly how beautiful and graceful are his shapes they look so beautiful they are so graceful if you see some of the snakes some of the varieties of snakes they are so beautiful some are of mustard color and when you see the uh, sunlight the reflection of that it looks as if it glitters and instead of appreciating the beauty of such snakes what we do we just try to throw a stone or we just take a stick and try to kill it many a times you must have seen you must have seen the adults doing that or some children enjoying doing that now onwards you will not allow anyone to do that let it go on its own it will never harm anyone he glides through the waterway from the stroke and now he is trying to glide through the water there is a small place where you can see some water also and he tries to glide from there oh let him go and the poet is observing and he tells this man let it go don't disturb him so you can see the difference between the poet's attitude the approach in handling observing this creature this and uh, the reptile and 
the other one other person who is trying to hit it with the snake or trying to chase the snake with the stick and where does it go in the reeds to hide reeds is nothing but the plants right plants that uh, are you can see near the uh, in marshy areas right into the reeds to hide without hurt he also is trying to the snake is also trying to hide itself small and green he is harmless even to children you see the poet's message here from these lines you can make out like in the previous uh, line we say oh let him go over the water into the reeds to hide without hurt that means let him not be hurt let us it is not harming us it's not trying to attack us so let it go without any hurt don't hurt him this shows that poet was concerned about the wellness of these uh, these snakes the snake that we are reading about small and green he is harmless even to children along the sand he lay until observed and chased away sometimes you will find them even they enjoy the sand they just lay there and you observe them don't chase observed and chased away and now he vanishes in the ripples along the green slim reeds so you can find the some of the uh, these rills are there reeds are there that is the marsh in the marshy areas you'll find some of the plants growing so it takes and uh, it hides itself so somehow it is able to protect or save himself from the attack of that person who is ready with the stick to attack it and kill it right this is a very simple poem but the message that you get here is that we should not harm these creatures they are harmless these snakes are harmless and if we if we think we always have an assumption that they are harmful then nobody can stop us but we have to understand that they are not harmful they are harmless and even to the children they are harmless so let them be safe let us not disturb them let the, let them have their own way of spending their life now explanation is done let us have a quick recap of what we discussed snake is trying to escape you got to know that snake was trying to escape because it it found it realized that it is being chased by the person who is holding a stick chased by the man with a stick makes unique curves it makes several curves and tries to have a quick rescue from there or you can say it moves from there because it does not want to be seen or noticed by anyone looks beautiful and graceful who looks beautiful and graceful it is a snake that looks beautiful and graceful it shows that the poet has that uh, ability to to appreciate the beauty of this graceful beautiful creature poet request the man to let it go over the water he through this poem it is not only to that person who is trying to attack him who is holding the stick and who is trying to attack him that he wants to make the request in a way it is an appeal to the entire human beings to all the human beings that we should not harm them we should not attack them we should not kill them and in the process what happens is snake manages to hide in reeds you can see how it is hiding itself it is a harmless green snake you can find you see the beautiful i was talking about beauty and grace you see you can make out from the picture that how graceful it is you see the eyes they are just shining and the kind of glaze the kind of shine they have on their on the scales right you can see how it is hiding and peeping from the reeds lies on the sand sometimes you will find them even they are lying on the sand finally vanishes away in the ripples of green reeds in the movement of the green reeds because it's a marshy area so there are there is some water also and it manages to move there saves itself from the man the man who was planning to kick to uh, 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 hit him with the stick he Uh, the snake manages to save itself now my dear children because we have already uh, discussed the whole poem we have even understood the uh, kind of things 
the poet has tried to appeal to the readers to the uh, to and to have a sensitivity to develop a sensitivity towards these creatures uh, for in in the children amongst the children so you see with this we can even discuss on the poetic devices that the poet has used here as i mentioned he is known for his uh, art of using imagery here you find there are plenty of uh, there are examples where he has used you can see beautiful and graceful then glides through glides through the water this is an example of imagery you can feel how it moves right and how it looks beautiful and graceful and then you have vanishes in the ripples along so some of the examples you'll find in this uh, poem which talks about the imagery you get a kind of images created in your mind when you are reading the part then it is personification here you get two examples here instead of saying it the poet uses he because here in the poem poet wants that we should address or we should take them to be just like any other human being and he uses he here he uh, addresses him uh, the snake as he he glides through or lo oh let him go it is not him means the any person any human being here but it is referring to snake so these are the examples of personification which is again a poetic device because here the poet is personifying is giving a, a kind of a feel that we uh, snake is just like any other human being and i'll introduce you to a new poetic device here perhaps new for you that is transferred epithet transferred epithet means epithet means adjective right here it is uh, i'll mention it here transferred epithet and you see the example to escape the pursuing stick now what does it mean epithet as i said epithet means adjective and what is adjective it has to qualify a noun right it has to describe a noun you can say it has to describe a noun so here the noun is stick you see the example that has that is uh, shown here it is stick now pursuing stick stick is pursuing is the stick moving or the stick is in somebody's hand and that person is moving i think you uh, you can understand very well that the stick is not moving so it is not the stick which is pursuing it is a person who is moving with the stick so here why this poetic device whenever you have a, an example where you find a an adjective describing a particular noun is referring instead of referring to the person to the thing that it should it is referring to something else it is transferred it is shifted right so i think this it, it it makes it very clear to you that transferred epithet means transferred adjective the adjective here the adjective is pursuing what is it uh, trying to qualify it is describing the stick the stick is pursuing but here instead of saying the stick is pursuing he actually means what is the actual meaning he actually means that it is the pursuing man the person with the stick not the stick that is pursuing that is why the adjective has been shifted it has been transferred this is an important one because you will be uh, getting uh, you'll come across the, the use of this kind of poetic device in other poems also uh, till your senior classes right so you don't forget it it is an important uh, poetic device now it's time for us to discuss the textual questions what is there are simple textual questions you'll be able to do it only one thing i would say don't just restrict yourself to these questions you can have you can have you just try to understand the poem i think any question that is asked whether it is a reference to context question or just short answer type questions you will be able to do it reference to context some lines will be given and you will be asked who is that's why you must have seen i was just Uh, referring to who what does it mean here what does this he here or uh, him here so th these things you will give why does he say so such small answer questions which can be answered in one sentence those are reference to context questions so you here you have some questions which can be answered in just 30 to 40 words what is the snake trying to escape from is it a harmful snake or what is its color 
the poet is the poet has described the entire thing so in such simple language that you can easily make out you can easily find out the answers the poet finds the snake beautiful find the words he uses to convey its beauty that is also given i just discussed it in the uh, in our discussion part what does the poet wish for the snake does he does the poet wish that the snake should be killed no perhaps he wishes that it should have a very safe exit from that place and it should not be killed it should be saved where was the snake before anyone saw it and chased it away where does the snake disappear again in the last concluding lines we get to know that this answer question actually covers the first and the second part first part is where does the, where was he seen and where does it disappear so with this i hope you have enjoyed the poem you have also appreciated the message that the poet wants to convey here through this poem to all of us that we have to love these animals we have to love these creatures we have to appreciate the beauty of these creatures we have to appreciate god's creation the way god has created human beings god has also created these animals these creatures these reptiles and they also have the same kind of right to live and enjoy this earth with this message i thank you for uh, your patient hearing and uh, once again wishing you a very happy day thank you goodbye